Good morning. I always have my chair with me, so I don't want to get lost with that. Uh, speaking sort of once a year in chapel or twice a year in chapel is really a problem because so many things come into my head. I listen to speakers and I write down things that I want to answer in their talks that I don't agree with. Uh, I, you know, but I don't have time and none of our memories is good enough, so I kind of let that go. But then I, I kind of wander between this awful feeling of hubris and complete self-doubt. Uh, you know, do I think, oh my gosh, you have to say something entirely original because half to three quarters of you remember everything I've said the last two years? Or do you think, <laughs> it doesn't matter, I could say the same thing I said last year because no one remembers a thing. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of back and forth on that. And then I, I read on the website that we're on YouTube, and I, I have to both sound good and look good, and to add. There. And, and then I hear, Brad's, I hear Ben's opening talk, and he says, you know, we're in Santa Barbara and Montecito and all the way to the you know, internet, and that goes to the mind of God. Oh, I don't know. So, yeah. I, I'm not complaining that I don't speak often enough. No, no way. Uh, that's just fine. In fact, I think I get to speak a lot in chapel, and that's part of the way I want you to listen to chapel uh, throughout this year, that Ben speaks the most frequently. We have guests speaking throughout the year. But in the midst of that speaking, there are lots of ways of speaking. There's the music. There's the liturgy. There are the actions of worship. And those are planned by lots of people. There's a whole team that gets together to plan worship. And I get to speak in the midst of that, in the midst of every song we sing as we talk about the themes that Ben's going to preach. We all speak. And that's really a wonderful collaboration and team activity. It's just when it comes to actually doing the message and having to speak all the words, that, that confusion comes in. So this morning I decided to give you three messages, since I kind of want to storm up. Uh, so we'll get out around 12.30. Uh, and uh, so you can just plan today, there'll be three chapel talks that you get to receive. And if you're taking notes uh, in your journals, and by the way, that's kind of a hint uh, for those of you who aren't taking notes in your journals, that uh, you're going to walk away from some incredibly rich encounters with the Word of God over the next you know, eight months. And if you don't write some thoughts down, they're just going to go away. They're not, you're not going to remember them. I know, because I didn't take any notes my entire undergraduate career, and I have no memory of what happened in chapel, except, well, but I won't go into those. Uh, so, so get something out, you know, and write some things down. If you want to write down about today, there are three services, and they're entitled three things, uh, wandering, worship, and community. Uh, Lindsay Byron, one of the chaplains for the uh, Westmont Orchestra, is going to be our lector, our reader today, and I'm going to ask her to come up and uh, give our first lesson. This is a reading excerpted from the book Exodus, chapter 16. The whole Israelite community set out from the Elim and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from you, from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. In the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. Then the Israelites saw it, and they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Each one gathered as much as they needed. I like that reading because it has so much to do with Westmont. You get to sit in the D.C. around pots of meat all the time. And sometimes you say, what is it? That's, you know, same thing. <laughs> uh, uh, but, with, but this is the basic story of manna in the wilderness and God's provision for his people. You've heard it before, and so why need to hear it again this morning? Well, I like to hear it again, and I hope you do too, because it reminds me that the stories of the Old Testament are not just stories of history. They're stories, rather, oftentimes, of faithfulness, and they're faithfulness lessons. There's something about that word siempre that we just sang that's really, really easy to forget for self-centered people who think probably more often about their own immortality, uh, that we're going to last, I'm just going to live forever. You know, I just don't, I don't think about the other options um, in this sort of 
constant self-denial about my mortality. Then I actually think about God's love going on forever and think about God's love going on forever in both directions of the space-time continuum. That God's love goes back forever, hard to imagine time before creation, still being as long as the time forward uh, into eternity. And so it'll be here before the world began and it will be here after its demise. Uh, as, as far as we can see. God put manna in the wilderness, and then he put that pillar of fire to guide the people along long before there was in and out or GPS, and he still puts it there in the midst of all our materialism, our self-centeredness, our covetousness, and those are just my little deserts. You may have some others that are unique to you. I need a couple of volunteers, three or four. I just want to come on up. Some, some people? Want? Volunteers. I just one. Two, 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 three. You have to be witnesses to this. You have to help out. Uh, manna was kind of a white, you know, flatbread, little flaky stuff on the ground. I think I've heard the closest we can come are graham crackers um, with some coriander seed on them. It's supposed to have a sort of a coriander taste. My bottle of coriander here says, thank you for volunteering. My body, don't eat those yet. My bottle of coriander says, an aromatic, bitingly pungent um, seasoning uh, roots deep into remote times. Ready? So. Not too much there, just, just a little to make it pungent. There we go. I don't think they have coriander in the DC, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Excellent. Try that. See what you think. Go ahead. Yeah, that's right. Make sure you get some of the coriander in there. Not too bad? Pretty good? Oh, you think so? Can't please all the people all the time. Thanks for trying that. That's, yeah. You're getting some smiles, some deeply pungent, aromatic. Yeah, good, good. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for coming up. Appreciate it. That's all you get. You get this. That's all. Because that's all God gave them, so that's all I can do. That's fine. You know, sometimes I think we need to know that... Um, God gives us what we need. Sometimes it's what I think I need, and sometimes it's what he knows I need. And sometimes those are very different things. Uh, I urge you to walk through every day of your experience at Westmont, whether it's in the classroom, the practice room, the rehearsal, the practice field, the lab, uh, social interactions, wherever it is, that you walk through with a sense of faithfulness. And that the question you ask is not, can I make it through? Can I get through this day? Can I get through this week? Can I get through finals? Don't ask that question if you want to practice faithfulness. The question to ask is, what is God giving me today that will get me through? Look for the presence of God, that the guiding hand, the assurance, the confidence, the neighbor, the answer. Look for those things that God is giving you to walk through with, rather than doubting that that is there at all. I'm amazed at my own lack of faithfulness. I remember the first time I had a rental car with a Garmin in it, you know, and it talked to me and all that, and it, it didn't give me enough warning, and so I missed the freeway on-ramp. But not to despair, because the little voice, very sweet voice, came on and said, reconfiguring route. And I thought, oh, I'm okay. It's reconfiguring my route. And just a minute later, it told me the next place to go. I had never been in a car before with a Garmin thing, but I completely trusted it. I didn't pull over and get out a map or think or worry. I just drove along, and it told me the next on-ramp. How many times have I done the exact opposite to the Lord that I have entrusted my life to and said, what am I doing? Where am I going? What should I do? Do I not trust just as much that he'll give me plenty of warning and in case I mess up, that he will actually give me an alternate route to get back on course and tell me where I need to be bound to? Let's stand and sing. Please be seated. In a lot of traditions, the word of God is so important that we're asked to stand for it. And it's a wonderful mix to think sometimes we can sit and reflect on it, and sometimes we just stand in awe of the presence of his guidance in the midst of things. Well, we've eaten manna, and we've stood on the banks of the Jordan, ready to cross over, and we can see it just over there, that land of milk and honey. I think the best image I have of that is that scene in Willy Wonka where the chocolate's just pouring out of the rocks. And it just has that same thing. But before crossing over, Joshua calls us to something. It's the same thing we want to be called to before every crossing. Every crossing from doubt to confidence. Every crossing from question to action. And that is that we should first come and listen to the Lord and know that he is with you.